So I'm going to give you, and we only have 23 minutes because I have a super hard stop. I was able to pop in for a little bit today because as I said, we're getting ready for a huge event. I'm a data nerd. It's not a secret to anybody. Like that's how my brain works. And I always go back to the data. And I'm hosting a, a top producer mastermind on Saturday. It's invite only. I have uh, Chris Voss, the author of Never Split the Difference, coming to spend the morning with us. But then I'm really going to dive into a whole bunch of statistics of how the listing distribution is, you know, throughout the entire country. So year to date, first seven months of the year, and some of the folks got to see me and spend some time with me in, in Northern Virginia at the Inspire event. That was very much designed to be inspirational versus... Um, some of the stuff I'm going to tell you right now is probably going to hurt people's feelings. January 1 through July 30th of this year, about 2.1, 2.2 million listings have been listed and sold. Or 74% of all agents in the United States sold zero listings. Zero. So 26% of every listing sold in 2024 has been controlled by that small group of people. 24% of everyone holding a license has done 100% of the listings. And if you look on a year-over-year -year annualized basis, 60% of the transactions we process as a brokerage at any any brokerage of scale is buy-sided. And this is where it gets really interesting. The average amount of time it takes to do a buy-side listing, according to NAR, is 80 to 100 hours per side. I've heard that number kind of narrow down to 87 hours on average. So between meeting a buyer and closing at the table, it's about 87 hours. The average listing transaction is way closer to 30 hours. So it actually takes two to three times as much effort to represent a buyer than a seller. So if you're looking purely at level of effort, which in software, which I spent last 10 years of my life building, and by the way, I run this company from a very software metric approach. And in software, when we build something, we call it LOE, level of effort. So when I look at anything, I address it like that. What's my LOE? And so if you look at a listing, the LOE is 30 hours and on buy side, the LOE is 87 hours. My nerdy brain when I was in production said, well, let me just go do listings because it's less work. But the only difference is it's a lot more skills-based and confidence-based. Like I would still challenge any agent in America to go head to head with me on a listing appointment because I got really, really good at scripts and dialogues. My ability to first qualify an appointment before I ever got there you know, where you ready, willing, and able, where all the decision makers are going to be present. Was I able to understand the emotionally causing the move, right? Like, were you just a looky loo? Like, hey, let's try it out. Or were like, do we need to have you move before the first day of school, right? Because you want to be in the correct school district. And so if I were in production, and by the way, this is the exact same thing I'm going to say to my agents in my private mastermind. It's like, I don't want to talk about anything else. I want to talk about how we take lists because we are going into somewhat uncharted territory in the sense of, by the way, the litigation stuff is just getting started. Like this is, we're not at the end of the movie. I think attorneys are going to meddle. I think the DOJ is not done meddling with us. If I was in production, all I would be obsessing is how do I control as many listings as possible? Because one of the first things I ever heard when I got licensed at 19 years old, it was at a KW convention and someone at the front with a microphone said, you have to list to last. And again, markets come and go. I, I remember once upon a time where I was carrying 250 listings and it was taking 18 months to sell. And at that point, I was begging for buyers because that was a transaction versus listings would just kind of sit there and get aged and you'd have to have really uncomfortable conversations with sellers. But I didn't change my mind and I stayed the course and it was always about listings until this day. You know, I firmly believe that. So just always understanding where the puck is going. And this is the shift and this is the kind of the point I want everybody to hear. Everyone's a listing agent now. Even if you only work with buyers, you're a listing agent now because every appointment will be competitive, right? The second I say to somebody, hey, in order for me to represent you, it's going to cost $25,000, $30,000 based on the average price point in the markets you all serve. Again, whether the seller's paying 100% of it through a concession or compensation or broker to broker, broker to seller to broker, what, whichever form of ice cream is being had during this transaction, you are now a listing agent. This is what happened before August 17th. You kind of bumped into somebody. If there was chemistry, they asked you to open the door. And before they knew it, you were their agent. There was never a, hold on a second, I'm 100% representing you and I'm going to earn X amount of dollars to get you that house. Whether or not you guys implied it overtly or not overtly, it was something like, hey, don't worry about it. I'm getting taken care of that. You don't have to come out of pocket. Even whether you said it or you did it, that's kind of what happened, right? So that's all over. Now, 
you need to drive them to an appointment where you should do a full presentation where you articulate the services you're willing to do for the fee you're willing to accept. That is exactly like a listing presentation. I will do X for Y. And in that, I'm not telling you how to do the business. You could do it for a flat fee. You could do it for a menu of services. You could do it for a percentage that's very small or very big. It's completely up to you and the consumer, the business that you're willing to engage in. But it is an appointment and it is a presentation driving to a signature, right? And that's where I think 60 to 70% of the agents were not used to doing it. It was in between your two ears because you weren't confident enough. Like I think a lot of agents that only did buyers or stayed on the buy side. And by the way, this is just my humble opinion. So if I hurt anybody's feelings, I apologize. But a lot of people said, I just love this side of it. Bullshit. I think you were scared to ask for the appointment on the listing side. I think you were scared to ask for, hey, this is my fee and this is what I charge for it. Because there are dollars involved on the listing side that weren't on the buy side. Statistically, the average listing costs at least $2,500 to bring it to market between photos, lockboxes, sign in the ground, staging, any of those fees. And that's just a statistical average. Some people invest quite a bit more. And I think that's a story we told ourselves of like, hey, maybe I'll do this because there's less dollars at risk. But you were actually doing the math wrong because it was three times as much time, which is the most valuable thing you have on the planet. So I think everyone needs to just have an honest conversation with themselves and say, am I going to be in this game? And this game is skills-based. It's confidence-based. Like I need to make sure my presentation is tight. I articulate my value proposition. And I'm completely okay with not working with you if you're not willing to commit. I also believe, I think by next summer, the people that are going to be coming in the industry and joining teams are going to look at this, what we used to do before and go, that shit was crazy. You used to put strangers in your car and not know what you were going to make or if they were going to pay you. <laughs> like, wait a second. You just accepted whatever the listing agent offered you. Think about a master plan townhouse community that's got 2000 homes all built in the same year, the same model, the same bump outs. You could literally earn X, Y, or Z on three identical homes listed at the exact same price. And your compensation was dictated by some stranger. That's actually kind of ass backwards if you think about it, right? Like you exerted the same level of effort for that consumer. It is fair to have a conversation of this is my fee, no matter what, whether it comes from the seller, it comes from you, it comes from a combination thereof. I'm going to render these services and you're going to pay me this compensation. So I think we're entering a new era that's going to be a lot more value-based and skills-based. And I do think there's going to be new categories that you are not used to. So I think there are very skills-based, functional-based changes, right? So on the listing side, there was always a category of sellers called for sale by owners, right or wrong? Yes. Right. Right. And so that number tended to be as low as 5%. And I've seen it as high as 12 or 13% in any 12-month period. The variance is strictly tied to amount of inventory. Less inventory, more for sale by owner. More inventory, less for sale by owner. So that is always something we contend it. And oh, by the way, anyone on here who's sold a for sale by owner on the buy side, before you showed it, you called that seller and you made sure they were offering compensation and you got it in writing before you open that door and schedule that appointment because that's what you did just to make sure that you were going to be taken care of or it was written into your buyer representation. Now, we've never had at scale, what I'm calling FISBO buyers, right? The percentage of consumers who watch the news and say, I'm going to represent myself. So make sure that that is addressed in your listing agreements. Like what happens if someone doesn't want to work with anybody and you're going to now compete with different models. Again, we time will tell what works and what doesn't, but there's going to be people say, Hey, I'll do it for a flat fee, no matter what you buy. Right. doesn't matter if it's 600,000 or a million. Like I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying capitalism does its thing. Yes. And and I know that to be true because we see it on the listing side, right? There are companies that do a flat fee no matter what price the house, 300, 700, 1.5 million. So just expect that on the buy side. I don't know how it'll work. I don't know. And when I say how, like the model that will succeed, I'm sure there's one that will. Is it going to get 100% market share? Never. Nothing's ever 100%, right? And that's the part that people forget. Like I'm the single largest brokerage on the planet. I'm the single largest brokerage in the United States, I have 4.2% of every license in the US. That means like 95, 96% of everybody else doesn't work with me. There's always room for different models, different businesses, different economic incentives. 
So I just think, you know, I'm quite loud that I disagree with the entire settlement. And I think these attorneys are a bunch of ambulance chasers. But the reality is like, we now have a new normal. These are the new rules. And so you have to kind of swing and adapt to what's available to you. Yeah. So there's an interesting, I can't quote the person, but I've, I've heard it a couple of times. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's pretty accurate. There, there was a, a third party company that did a survey to buyers and asked the average buyer what the amount of hours a buyer agent spent with them. And do you guys know what, can you take a guess, put in the chat, how many hours the average consumer thought you spent with them helping them buy a house on the buy side? I, I already told you it's 80 to 100 or 87 hours. Take a guess. So you guys are in the range. It was 15 hours. So think about the disconnect in value. It's 87 to the consumers thinking it's 15. So first of all, you have to have a presentation. <laughs> and again, like the, the hack for you, it's, it's already, the research has already been done. Google NAR list of things by, you do on the buy side or some combination thereof. I'm sure Michael can find it and throw it in the chat. It's 105 things, put 105 things in AR and it should pop up. Those are the actual things that we do for a buyer on average, right? So just even identifying them and having them in here. And the conversation sometimes goes, if someone's like, well, can I pay you less? Again, less of whatever is asked. I'm not dictating what you set the fee for, but it's like, sure, which one of these things do you want to do and not me, right? Like, this is what I do for the fee I'm charging. What exactly do you want me to do versus not do? Right. And I'm hearing of a, of a couple of companies that are like partnering with law firms. I had an agent, this is a true anecdotal story where an agent was on a luxury property on the listing side, told me that the buyer chose to be unrepresented, but then hired a law firm to do the negotiating. First of all, it said it took like 10 days versus one day because the lawyers would take 24 business hours and not respond past five or over the weekend. So it took 10 days to negotiate something that us as realtors who are, are on it would have done in a day. And then at settlement, there was an itemized list of fees for the time spent, and it ended up being randomly super close to what the listing agent was charging the seller, right? Was billed to the buyer. So at the end of the day, it's a full-time job. It's work. So I think your job in answering the question directly is to be able to identify exactly what you do, the value you bring to the table, and what you guys should all be obsessing with is your own number. So statistically, I know for a fact that in the last six months, Bright MLS, 55% of the properties had concessions, right? So are you below or above the market average, right? How does this sound for a script if it's true, right? So you should research the last 24 buyers you've represented. Just say, hey, on average, I get a three or 4% concession off list. On average, in the last 10 times I've been in a multiple contract situation, I win 70% of the time. On average, I get a 2% or 5% discount off list to sell ratio on my buy sides. Like this is all stuff you know as a listing agent, right? Days on market, net execution, all these things. You now need to know your numbers on the buy side from a sales pitch standpoint. And oh, by the way, once you get your numbers and you're talking to buyers, you need to give them specific instructions as to what you want them to say in your digital footprint, right? Like the review should read, hey, Michael was amazing. He helped us found our dream home and he was able to negotiate a 3% or a 5% discount. Or what if the review says we were in a multiple contract situation and Michael negotiated a free rent back for the seller that cost me no dollars for 30 days because my mortgage payment didn't start till the following month but I didn't have to go up on price and I still won the house, right? Like there's so many things that you guys take for granted as professionals because it's second nature to you, but like, it's pretty cool. It's pretty magical. It's a masterful negotiation skill sets that you guys have probably acquired over the last five, 10, 15 years and you take it for granted. So you actually have to become very good marketers, which is what Michael teaches and self promoters and articulate what you do. If you're going to defend the fee you want to live with. Well, so, so yeah, so don't be in your head so much, right? Like I feel because of all these litigation and all the stuff we're talking about, like we live in this like echo chamber of our, of our inside baseball. At the end of the day, next year, my prediction is about 5 million people are going to move. They don't give a shit about the settlement, about CCP, about BBA. It's all a bunch of inside baseball to us. These people need to find a home for their loved ones to raise their families. And they need to do it in the shortest amount of time for something they can afford, whether they're on the selling side and they're trying to move to their next location or on their buy side and they're going through their first transaction. It's all about empathy 
for the consumer and helping them achieve their goals. I think we've, especially in 2024, we've been weighing our heads about the legal stuff and now we're all legal scholars versus like mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we help families find their home to raise their families and loved ones and create all their memories. I love it. Thank you so much, Leo. There's a couple of people on the chat that will be seeing you in Miami. If you don't follow Leo on Instagram or any social media platforms, please do. And again, thank you so much for your time here today, Matt.